Welcome again, and thank you all for being here with us today um, to, to discuss the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on some of New York City's most essential but excluded workers, canners and street vendors. So the event today is hosted jointly by Sure We Can, the Street Vendor Project, and WeGo. Sure We Can is a nonprofit recycling center, community space, and sustainability hub based in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Sure We Can provides a space where canners who collect redeemable cans and bottles to earn a living can come together through recycling, composting, gardening, and arts. The Street Vendor Project is a grassroots membership-based organization of street vendors with the mission to defend and expand vendors' rights and improve their working conditions in New York City. And WeGo is a global network that provides research, policy advocacy, and networking support to organizations of informal workers around the world. Uh, my name is Jenna Harvey, I'm from WeGo, and I'll be providing a very brief introduction to our discussion before we hear from our fantastic panelists today. So in 2020, in the initial months of the COVID-19 crisis, WeGo launched a global study to look at the impact of the crisis on the livelihoods of informal workers in 12 cities across the world. So a bit of context on the informal economy, um, the majority of the, world work, the world's workers, 60% globally, work in the informal economy. These workers work without legal and social protections and often survive from daily earnings, making them especially vulnerable to the lockdowns imposed in many places during the start of the crisis. So through the study in these 12 cities, we partnered with organizations of informal workers to conduct phone surveys and interviews with individual workers in a range of different sectors. So this included street vendors, informal recyclers, domestic workers, home-based producers, moto taxi drivers, and others. Of course, here in New York City, the study was focused on canners and street vendors in partnership with Sure We Can and the Street Vendor Project. And we're here today to share some of those learnings and experiences from New York City with all of you. But if you're interested in learning more about the global study, we've provided a link here where you can read more about the study and access some of the emerging findings from the different cities. Um, so next slide, if you could, Chris. Um, quickly, before we start, I wanted to help put the findings from New York City in global context. Um, so across these diverse ge geographies in the global north and south, and across all these different occupational groups, what these workers have in common as informal workers is a lack of social and legal protections through their work. And as a result, we've seen shared negative impacts across the cities, uh, primarily a loss of income and a lack of governmental support in response. However, in some cases, the negative impacts in New York City were especially pronounced in comparison to some of the other cities in the Global South. Um, so for example, New York City vendors had the steepest drop in average daily earnings in April, 2020, compared to vendors in nine of the cities globally. They were also showing the slowest recovery by June and July. Um, canners in New York were about equally likely to receive government cash grants as their peers in Lima, Peru, and Ahmedabad, India. Street vendors in New York reported a higher rate of hunger among adults and children in their households than street vendors in Mexico City, but they were less likely to receive cash relief than workers in Bangkok, Thailand, and less likely to receive food support than vendors in Ahmedabad or Delhi, India. Um, so this is just to say that in one of the wealthiest cities in the world, we see that these essential informal workers are heavily impacted and, and not getting the support that they need. Um, so without further ado, I now want to introduce our, our fantastic panelists today. Um, first, we're going to hear from Jessica Ramos, a New York State Senator and longtime supporter of Street Vendor Project, a fierce advocate for vendors in New York City who will speak to us about about street vendors and what they need now. Um, Veronica Cruz, the Deputy Chief of Staff for State Senator Julia Salazar, who will speak about how changes to the New York bottle bill could support the canning, the canning community. Um, also, Julia Salazar is, is also a long-term supporter of Sure We Can and canner, in the canning community. Next, we'll hear from Mohammed Saad, a street vendor leader from the Street Vendor Project to speak about his experience during these past 10 months um, working during the crisis. 
Then we'll hear from Chicago Crosby and Rosa Mite. Chicago and Rosa are canner leaders at Sure We Can. They were also both researchers in the study. And so they're going to speak about their experience with the study and also their, their insights and experience of impact on the canning community. Then finally, we'll hear from Chris Hartman from the Department of Public Health at SUNY Old Westbury and also a board member of Sure We Can, um, who will be presenting some of the data and key findings from the study um, on these two sectors in New York City. We'll conclude with um, recommendations and demands, what needs to be done now for these sectors and then we'll open it up to Q and A. Um, so the representative from Senator Salazar's office is Isabel Andreos, uh, the director of constituent services. Sorry for um, for, for uh, not listing your name in the beginning. Um, if we could pass over to you, Isabel, and then we'll go back to Senator Ramos. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, can everyone hear me? Wonderful. Um, thank you. Um, first to Street Vendor Project, um, Urban Justice Center for their amazing report. Sure we can. Women in informal employment, globalizing and organizing. Of course, Senator Ramos and the vendors and canners who are representing their workforce today. Unfortunately, Senator Salazar cannot make it, but she offers her fullest support and deepest gratitude to the vendors and canner, canners, not only throughout North Brooklyn, here in District 18, but across New York City and New York State. She's honored to be a champion for this cause with you all. Street vendors and canners represent the best of what New York City has to offer, contributing to the rich cultural fabric and beauty of our city with untiring effort to help their families thrive while sustaining a cultural role for our neighborhoods and communities. The inclusion of these workers for life from life-saving relief during this pandemic has been cruel. It is a terrible gap that must be filled with urgency and now. The 2021 legislative session is this time and with the Senate supermajority, now is the time to act on legislation that centers around equity and the protections for working people to deserve to live a just and fulfilled life here in New York. Senator San Salazar has proudly co-sponsored Senator Ramos' Ramos's legislation to protect vendors and canners, but we need more. Here in North Brooklyn, sure we can, we need to give sure we can a secure place to collect and sort recyclables. We need to support our canners through Senator Kaminsky's bottle bill and increase the bottle deposit from five cents to 10 cents. And of course, on a larger scale, we need to create a fund for excluded workers and tax the rich. This is all possible. Again, thank you all. And Senator Salazar is looking forward to a productive session in Albany this year. Thank you. Um, now, why don't we go to Mohammed Saad from the Street Vendor Project? So just to remind everyone, Mohammed is a street vendor leader with the Street Vendor Project who's gonna speak about his experience um, during the COVID crisis. So over to you, Mohammed. أحب أرحب بكم الأول جميعا أنا اسمي محمد صعب من مصر مهاجر جيت هنا من 2014 وأنا في عدو عدو في منظمة البعين الشرع من 2015 طبعا ساعة من الكوفيد من شهر ثلاثة وإحنا يعني إحنا كنا ثلاثة على العربية شغالين دلوقتي ما ما فيش يعني دلوقتي بقينا واحد بقينا واحد شوية العربية بقت في الجراج شوية البلاد شوية الجراج كل شهر عايز 500 دولار شوية كل حاجة بادت شوية مساعدات ما فيش شوية قرض قدم على قرض اترفض قدم على مش عارف يتيع اترفض استلفت من كل الناس بوصت كرداتي كلها فانا بصراحة يعني شهر ثلاثة ده من أول شهر ثلاثة السنة اللي فاتت كان صعب بصراحة لحد الوقت أنا مش عارف أشتغل بصراحة يعني البزنس بتاعي أنا العربية بتاعتي في الجراج لحد الوقت لا عارف أطلع ولا عارف أجي معايا اثنين كانوا شغالين اللي اثنين قاعدين ما هو لا عارف يشتغل ولا عارف يعمل ما فيش شغل أصلا في الشارع 
العربيه عشان تطلع او البرمت عشان اجيبه اجيبه بكام البرمت؟ 25000 دولار طب اجيبه اعمل بيه ايه؟ احط من جيبي مثلا فلوس انا مش هعرف اطلع يومياتهم اصلا فدي دي مشكله معايا تاني حاجه احب احب يا ريت النهارده السيتي السيتي كنسل كله يا رب يقول نعم للقانون دوت لانه هيفيدنا جدا في شغلنا بدل ما ناخد برمت ب 25000 دولار و30000 دولار هيبقى 500 دولار في السنه او في او في السنتين 1000 دولار فهيبقى كويس لينا جدا وهنعرف نشتغل وهيبقى برمت باسمك فهتبقى حاجه كويسه واحب اشكر الستيت سيناتور جاسكا راموس على القانون اللي هيفرق الضرايب على اغنيه هيوفر مساعدات ماديه لكل العمال اللي في نيويورك واحب اشكرها برضك على المشروع اللي هيرفع من الحدود تماما على كل البرامج والرخص وده هيفيدنا كتير احب اشكرها بصراحه كتير على دعمها لينا ودعمها للشارع وبالنيابه عن بقعين الشارع انا بشكرها بصراحه على دعمها لينا ودعمها لكل الناس احنا عايزين عايزين يعني عايزين حد يساعدنا في اللي احنا فيه ده احنا اللي عايزين عايزين يعني عايزين مساعدات في البيزنس بتاعنا عايزين حد يساعدنا في البيزنس نفسه احنا عايزين نشتغل احنا مش جايين نقعد عشان ناخد فلوس من حد احنا عايزين نشتغل عايزين شغلنا يرجع زي الاول يعني احنا عايزين شغلنا يرجع زي الاول خساره اه خسرنا بصراحه انا مش عارف اعمل ايه كريدات وفلوس واصحابي واهلي واجيب فلوس من مصر كل حاجه عملتها بصراحه كل حاجة. لحد دلوقتي بعمل كده كل حاجه عملتها فياريت تبصون يعني يا ريت الحكومه تساعدنا في البيزنس بتاعنا اللي يا... ويا ريت يا ريت النهارده السيتي كانسل يمرر القانون ده كلهم يقولوا نعم الاغلبيه تقول نعم النهارده على القانون ده عشان نترحم من 25 اقر بتفتحهم كل سنتين او 30 اقر وانا بشكركم جميعا وشكرا يا جماعه Thank you so much, Mohammed. Um, great. So I have heard that Senator Ramos is now here. So Senator Ramos, I will go to you now. Hey, good morning. Thank you so much, Jenna. It's good to see you and Mohammed, uh, everyone else, um, but of course, especially the street vendors. I, you know, growing up in Queens, I've always had such deep admiration uh, for street vendors. I think that there's no greater um, expression of, you know, I always talk about the entrepreneurial spirit, but really it's about a human being being able to provide for themselves and for their families. And I think that, you know, as the daughter of immigrants and recognizing that, you know, most of us are immigrants one way or another, um, you know, our families come here um, searching for a better tomorrow. Um, and very often, unfortunately, the, gov the government uh, puts obstacles in our way. Um, and this is one of those obstacles. The fact that the city has not updated their street vending policy for almost 40 years is a crime within and of itself. Um, and it, hopefully it's one that will be corrected very, very soon. I'm, I, I'm deeply thankful um, for the organizing that the Street Vendors Project has done. As you know, here in my district, I represent thousands of street vendors who work very hard with their families, with their children, um, and we need to do what's right by them. Uh, we want to make sure that there are opportunities for growth. We want to make sure that they're not criminalized for doing honest work. Um, and uh, even though I know the city council bill is to increase the number of vending permits, I believe in a world where there shouldn't be a cap on vending permits. Everyone should be able to, you know, provide for themselves in this way if that is their choice. Um, and so. I, I very much look forward to continuing to work uh, with you guys. Um, I want to thank Mohammed. I want to thank uh, Karina Kaufman Gutierrez, Leticia Ochoa, everybody else at the Street Vendors Project. 
Um, you know, this report, I think, is going to go a long way in um, helping New Yorkers understand what a dire situation street vendors have been in for a long time. You know, remember, these are also people, New Yorkers, who haven't received a dime, really, in economic relief during this pandemic, and yet they have found it in their heart and in their own, you know, businesses, in their smallest businesses, to figure out how to provide for those who are in need. Um, I know because I have worked very closely with the Street Vendors Project during the pandemic uh, to be able to feed uh, many of our neighbors. Um, and you know that's what community is about, um, about really sticking together and helping each other through difficult times. That means it's our turn to help the street vendors the way the street vendors help, have helped us. So I'm hoping um, that change will come very, very soon um, and I, and uh, we're going to continue to fight together until the street vendors receive the justice and the dignity that they deserve. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Senator Ramos. Now we are going to Chicago and Rosa, um, street uh, canner leaders from Sure We Can and researchers in the study here in New York to speak a bit about their experience with the study and the impacts on their sector. So Chicago and Rosa, over to you. Okay. Hola, me llamo Rosa. Hace ya 11 años que llevo trabajando aquí como recicladora en la ciudad de Nueva York. A lo largo de esta crisis nosotros, nosotros, eh, los recicladores hemos sentido mucho el efecto. Muchos de nosotros todavía estamos en recuper recuperándonos de, de cuando empezó la, el canje, que cerraron mucho los sitios de reciclaje por, el, por miedo a contagiarse del COVID. Es, demasi es, es demasiado alto para trabajar, incluso en Chilwi Kane, cerró durante el verano porque parte de nuestro equipo se contagió del COVID. Al principio de la pandemia, el maltrato hacia los recicladores aumentó. Algunas personas en la calle pensaban que podríamos tener el virus por el trabajo que hacemos. Hasta alguien cercano a mí estuvo a punto de recibir una multa por la policía por hacer este trabajo. La comunidad durante... La, la comunidad china de Chulwiken con esta espe especialmente fue la que estuvo más afectada. Muchos de ellos no salieron porque tenían miedo a ser, porque eh, como el problema vino de, de, de China, entonces mucha gente lo atacaba y muchos de ellos no salieron por miedo. Y hasta la vez, hasta la fecha de son muy pocos los que han salido de la comunidad china. Afortunadamente, Chubu y que nos ayuda a muchos de nosotros a través de ofrecimiento de PPI, ayuda de, en efectivo, alimento, apoyo comunal. Nos cuidamos unos a otros, pero se necesita más apoyo desde arriba. Con respecto al, al proceso de recuperación que ofrece la ciudad, Por favor, incluya a las personas indocumentadas. Ellos también necesitan de esta ayuda. Gracias. Mil gracias, Rosa. Thank you so much. And now we will go to Chris um, to provide some of the findings from the study in New York City. Hi, good morning, everybody. Can you see the screen? Thumbs up, awesome, thank you. Good morning again. Um, I'm happy to share some of the findings from New York City from both street vendors and also canners. Uh, thank you to WeGo, first of all, for funding this really, really important work. Um, I represent a team of 10 people, professors, students, and also informal workers who coordinated data collection over the summer here in New York City. It's also part of a larger global study, 12 cities made up of dozens of researchers. So here in New York City, we surveyed 118 informal workers in five languages, English, Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, and Bengali. 
We purposely interviewed slightly more women than men to reflect the gender makeup of Street Vendor Project and also Sure We Can. In addition to uh, serv uh, surveying informal workers, we also conducted a number of in-depth interviews with key informants, including leaders of uh, these organizations. As is the case for many New Yorkers, canners and vendors reported severe health challenges, both physical and also mental, as these quotes demonstrate. About 22% of respondents reported that someone in their household uh, had confirmed COVID-19 or COVID-19-like symptoms. Many reported losing family members and others uh, shared heartbreaking stories of having their lives upended uh, by the pandemic, as you can read from, from these quotes and as we've already heard from representatives of the organizations. We think that these data are actually an underestimate of the personal impact of COVID-19 since respondents were allowed to skip questions when they did not feel comfortable answering. Also at the time of the survey, um, COVID-19 was extremely sensitive uh, or an extremely sensitive topic for participants who had lost family members, friends and other loved ones because of the pandemic. In April, all vendors and two thirds of canners stopped working. Only 25% uh, of vendors had returned to work by June, um, but most canners did return to work uh, in the month of June, with the notable exception of elderly canners and also Chinese canners who faced discrimination. And we heard the same uh, from Rosa as well. The most important uh, reason cited by both canners and vendors for not working was health concerns or having already become sick themselves. Workers also cited restrictions on movement by the state as key factors in their decision not to work. More than half of uh, the vendors also cited the lack of customers, uh, foot traffic. And this would have been especially relevant uh, for street vendors who were considered, um, uh, excuse me, again, especially so for street vendors um, who lacked the customers as Mohammed shared with us uh, just a, a few moments ago. Having personal protective equipment or PPE has been crucial uh, to getting back to work for canners especially. 80% of canners reported using PPE at the time of the survey. Uh, thanks to donations from nonprofit organiz organizations first and then later the city's test and trace program, uh, Sure We Can and Street Vendor Project have distributed over 100,000 face masks to workers and community members. I think uh, one of the most important findings uh, from this study is that the pandemic absolutely decimated the average daily earnings of canners and also street vendors. In April, canners were earning about 15% of their average daily earnings uh, from February, which was the uh, quote unquote pre-pandemic period. Canner's average daily earnings depicted here in green had recovered to the February level by June or July, uh, but from a very, very low level of only $18 per day. Importantly, earnings for women have not recovered as quickly as those for men. In contrast, uh, street vendors depicted here in orange had higher average earnings before the pandemic, but by April, they were earning less than 1% of their average February earnings. And then by June, they were still earning only a fraction of those February earnings. What's really important to understand here is that this data um, does not fully account for the seasonality of both of these professions, canning and vending. Uh, both groups would normally be making much more money in the summer than they would in the winter. So uh, for example, canners uh, would be making at least double on average what they earned in February and they would be making that in, in June or July. Another important note is that the pandemic has changed care and household responsibilities, which added additional economic um, and also mental stress to both canners and vendors. Nearly one half of respondents reported increases in cooking and cleaning responsibilities, uh, notably, women uh, depicted here in orange uh, report were much more likely to report increased care and household responsibilities, which calls attention to the differential impacts of the pandemic by gender.
And given all of these hardships, access to re relief and small business support um, was absolutely not guaranteed. Although many canners and vendors did receive some relief, uh, we found that 26% of vendors and 29% of canners had received no government relief whatsoever. That includes stimulus checks and unemployment assistance, for example. In a separate study by Street Vendor Project, they found that 38% of vendors did not receive government cash relief because uh, the vendors were undocumented. Other important findings include the fact that uh, more than half of vendors and canners had received uh, no government food assistance whatsoever. And according to Street Vendor Project, none of the vendors that they supported to apply for small business loans from the federal government were actually improved. And finally, I want to share some of the coping strategies taken by canners and vendors. Um, about half of surveyed participants drew down on savings. Many others borrowed money and sought financial help from family, friends, or neighbors. And of course, that goes for those who were able to do so. We know that many more uh, canners and vendors were not able to do this because of their uh, very precarious economic situation. So for more information on the findings from the study, including photos and quotes from workers, uh, fact sheets are available on WeGo's website. And that information, those, uh, those links were provided in the chat just a couple of minutes ago. You can also contact Sure We Can or Street Vendor Project. We will be more than happy to provide you with more extensive fact sheets and findings from, uh, from this study. We're also very, very happy to announce uh, that phase two of the survey will take place in June 2021 to examine the longitudinal impacts of this crisis on both vendors and canners here in New York City. So thank you, WeGo, for your continued uh, support of this very important and groundbreaking research. Thanks so much, Chris. Thanks for that fantastic summary of the findings. Um, so just to remind everyone, there will be time for Q&A at the end, um, but I've just been told Chicago is here with us. So let's go to Chicago now, uh, canner leader from Sure We Can, to talk about her experience with the study and the impact on her sector. Chicago, over to you. Hello, um, good morning, everyone. Sorry for um, getting here so late. But uh, what I would like to, uh, You've mentioned the study that we did last year and the research on it. And I found, you know, it was sort of heartbreaking um, because some some of us canners were really in, you know, just poor health in general um, without that. And then we also had one in particular that came up from Georgia, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, I believe. And uh, they lived in, he and his wife, and I think three or four year old child lived in there. SUV. So they drove it up here because he he either um, lost his job or it moved or something. Anyway, he couldn't work there. So he thought that he'd come to New York and it will be much better for him and his family. They had a greater chance of him finding work and whatever. But as it turns out, he wasn't able to find work and he started collecting cans. And someone um, in the interim, someone uh, stole their SUV. So their home was gone as well. But the the way he he was looking at things was just so remarkable. He he felt that you know well n next week things will be a little bit better because of this. He found things to latch onto outside of his problems, and that takes a lot of strength, and especially during that time when you know everyone was indoors and he couldn't do too much anyways because of the shut in. So my hats off to him. I would love to know and catch up with what's going on with him now. But another thing I would like to mention is that I have yet to uh, run into one canner who's contacted or came in contact with um, COVID. So that works out well for us, but we work by ourselves anyway, out on the streets. So, you know, we could avoid this, but um, going forward, uh, I just couldn't, uh, I didn't see why uh, we weren't, we were so excluded as far as, you know, this garbage and trash collecting and everything it was so much of it there were people that were hanging bags still on the side of their fences during that time even though there was no one to come by and get them i didn't realize how many people did this actually saved cans and bottles you know or put them aside or collected them until covid uh it's just so many and then they were just being 
thrown in the back of garbage trucks. I don't want to see that again. If there's any way that that could be avoided, that that has to happen because it was just so much of it. I know I'm always talking about it, but um, every um, but every time uh, that I saw them hanging on the fences and whatnot, I would try to get those. I mean, no matter how loaded up I was. And I did this until Sure We Can, which is one of the last uh, redemption centers to close until it closed. And the other uh, redemption center is just so far away. But if we could, if they would have recognized us as some people who were essential, you know, regardless of the way it looks and, you know, they wouldn't do it themselves. But if they think about it, it was some essentiality to us because of the garbage, the um, sanitation workers were out there. And um, we were doing as much as we can. And even they were sympathetic to us. So if if um, a group like that could recognize our value, then why can't others? Because the people, uh, a lot of people who uh, collect these cans feel that the city appreciates what they're doing. Not the canners, the ones who collect them for us. They feel that the city appreciates what they're doing and they're, you know, doing more of it and, and um, neighbors are seeing this and, and they're collecting as well. I don't say anything about how the city feels or whatever. You know, that's an ongoing issue with us. But um, if they have this belief, then why can't, you know, others say, well, you know, if they're doing this and feeling this way, then we should step up. We should be behind them because so far, you know, I haven't seen any support as far as canons are concerned. So I wish they would just take a look at what people in their homes are doing, you know, and then try to focus on that point. But before just, you know, uh, assuming that we're what we're doing is worthless. Look at how many people are helping us and make a judgment from that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Chicago. Um, such a powerful point about the essential nature of, of your work. Um, so that's a fantastic transition into our concluding section um, on recommendations. What needs to be done now? You know, both shared demands for canners and street vendors and specific demands for these two sectors. So um, now I'm gonna hand over to, I'll introduce our, our next panelist who I didn't introduce in the beginning, um, Ryan, uh, Castilli Castalia is the executive director of Sure We Can. Um, Mohamed Atia is the executive director of Street Vendor Project. And Karina Gutierrez Kaufman is the deputy director of Street Vendor Project. And the three of them are going to walk us through this agenda of action that needs to be taken now to support the canning and the street vending community. So, first, um, I believe to you, Ryan. Yes, thanks so much, Jenna. Um... I just want to first uh, say thank you all for being here. Thank you to Senator Ramos and to Senator Salazar's office, and especially to uh, Mohammed Saad, Chicago, and Rosa for joining us. Um, it takes a lot of courage to stand up and share experiences like this, so I just want to shout that out. Um, I think from what we've talked about here today and what those of us who live in New York City know just by walking around and being a part of the fabric of the city, uh, canners and street vendors are essential to the landscape of New York City. And without them, the city just would not be what it is and uh, would be that much less textured, that much less culturally rich, uh, that much less tasty, and that much more unclean. So we think it's absolutely essential that the governmental institutions of, this, of the city, of the state, on the federal level, recognize that contribution that canners and street vendors are making by extending existing recovery programs to include them. I'm talking about direct cash relief that uh, undocumented workers are excluded from and uh, extension of small business loans and also um, and similar structures to include informal workers and uh, more individual community level workers. So we know that without those, that kind of support, uh, the canners and the street vendors will disappear, and New York will be that much less for it. I'll pass it off to Mohammed now. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan. 
And thanks all. Uh, so again, my name is Mohammed Atiya. I'm the director of the Street Vendor Project at the Urban Justice Center. So glad to be here with you all. So honored uh, to be a part of this amazing study. And thanks, we go for the amazing support to make such a crucial study happen. And again, listening to Mohammed Saad, Rosa, Chicago, and listening from our leaders, it is so heartbreaking to hear about the impact of COVID-19 in our communities. And for people from all across the world, they might think that New York City is in good shape, that people in New York City are lucky and privileged and they have a better life than anyone else. But the sad truth that this is not the case uh, for most people. So for most people within our communities, the immigrant communities, the undocumented, the hardworking class, they are struggling. And they are not struggling only because of COVID. Make no mistake, this system that is in place for decades have made those people livelihood super hard that they cannot even make it within a couple of weeks of a crisis. And we have seen that within our community. We have seen that with a lot of the street vendors once COVID hit the city, people went broke in the span of a couple of weeks. And you would be surprised why this is happening, why people don't have any safety net to rely on, why people don't have savings if they are running such a big business in New York City. I mean, such a small business, but a successful business in such a great city of New York City. And then it is really hard. It is really hard because there is a broken vending system that exists that prohibit people from surviving and thriving and expanding their business. There is a lot of rules and regulations that make their livelihood quite impossible to just uh, be able to keep up, be able to expand, be able to uh, build up that cash, that savings that they can rely on. As Mohammed shared earlier, his life went upside down in literally a couple of weeks. The business is out. He can't even go to work. He was hiring two people. He had to let them go. And he had no income. He ran over all his savings. He had to borrow money from family and friends. And this is the case for thousands of vendors. Like, Mohammed is not a unique uh, person or not in a unique position during COVID time. So it is really, really difficult to look at how things have changed during COVID but it realized that we, it made us realize that the systems that have been in place for decades have been so broken, so bad, so inequitable for, for decades, for centuries to these informal workers. So one of the things that we have been pushing for, and uh, this is something that will affect everyone across the board, across the informal workers, across the immigrant communities is passing mark the market bill to tax the billionaires and create fund for the, for the excluded workers. Millions of workers have been excluded during COVID just because the lack of immigration status. This is really, really bad in such a country of immigrants, a country that relies on the immigration workforce. Uh, we, have, we have been seeing a lot of movement in the past year in 2020 like hundreds of organizations, thousands and millions of people taken to the streets, demanding funds to be created to support the undocumented workers and all the excluded workers across the board. So we are so lucky to have such great leaders like Senator Salazar and Senator Ramos to sponsor such legislation, to push it forward in Albany. And I wanna take it quickly to the vendors' needs. Street vendors are the smallest businesses in our city. and for 38 years, we haven't seen any changes. And this is a shame. It's a shame that New York City has such a system and haven't changed it yet. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, which is really, really great. Tomorrow, the city council will finally be voting on intro 1116, a legislation that will increase the number of permits gradually over the next 10 years. I really wanna give a shout out to council member Margaret Chen, to the speaker, Corey Johnson, and to 31 co-sponsors. I don't wanna mention all of their names, but 31 co-sponsors, amazing people who believe in change that must happen, who believe that the vending system should be equitable and it shouldn't be that bad. Nobody should be criminalized. 
for doing their work, nobody has to go to the underground market to pay twenty and twenty-five thousand dollars to rent someone's permit. So I really want to thank everyone who co-sponsored this bill at the moment. I really want to urge all the city council members, every single council member, to vote yes on this legislation tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me, at the state meeting. That would be super awesome. This will be a historic moment for the street vendors, communities across New York City. And we can't wait to work with uh, Senator Ramos and folks in Albany to even change the system and work and re-envisioning the whole vending system that has no caps on the license and permits. So that's also another uh, thing that we are looking for. Uh, finally, for those people who are watching us today and get really inspired and really want to support, if you want to support your local street vendor, today is the day. Today is the last day to do that in the city council. We have five council members' names, phone numbers, and districts right there. Those people are on the fence. Those people and every council member in the city, they have a lot of street vendors who are constituents, a lot of street vendors serve the districts, live and operate business in their districts, please call them today and ask them to vote yes on the legislation in through 1116. Ask them to support the legislation and support the smallest businesses in New York City, the smallest businesses who didn't receive any support from the city. Yes, some people have received some support like the stimulus check, some people receive the unemployment, but make no mistake, no vendor we know received any small business loan or grant from the government, despite the fact that there were millions and billions and maybe trillions out there for big corporation money for small businesses. Street vendors didn't get access to any of that. And that's because of the system that exists right now. That's because the lack of permits. I pretty much covered everything I wanted to say about SVP, so I want to turn it back to Jenna. Thank you, Mohammed. Fantastic news that, that that bill is coming to a vote. That is really good news. Um, but I hope I join you in hoping that everyone will call today um, and join hands with street vendors in, in this struggle. Um, so now we're going to go to Canners. I'm going to pass back to you, Ryan, to uh, go over this agenda for action for Canners for us. Thanks so much, Jenna. Um, just really quickly, since I know we're running out of time and we want to get to questions, um, but Mohammed really laid out for us these, uh, the extraordinary potential of this moment. Um, we have this unprecedented opportunity now that the pandemic has laid bare so starkly all the inequities and divisions we experience, I mean, that we experience day to day, I mean, before the pandemic that have now become into just such stark relief. So we have this opportunity for real, thorough institutional transformation. Um, on the canner side, now that we've heard these extraordinary opportunities and demands that the street vendors are making, on the canner side, um, we need to expand the New York bottle bill. Uh, it's only been expanded once since its institution in 1983, and that was just to increase the types of containers contained within it. The deposit hasn't changed for over 30 years. We need to raise that deposit from five cents to 10 cents, and the handling fee that redemption centers like ours rely upon to survive from three and a half cents to five cents. The way it stands uh, is it's impossible to structure a sustainable organization the way it stands and canners all across the city and state struggle to survive with five cents per piece we need to change that sites like ours are under threat from gentrification sure we can is currently struggling to continue in its space we face eviction and um, with the pandemic our situation has become even more tenuous so we insist that governmental institutions recognize the work of the canners and the work of redemption centers and nonprofit organizations like ours by providing opportunities for capital funding and other financial support that would allow us to secure our space and maintain and develop this work into the future into a future that we know is going to place the work work like the canners and street vendors are doing at the center of uh, new constructive and sustainable societies Finally, as we're entering into this uh, new world and 
the vocabulary and grammar in legislative context is changing. We see conversations about the circular economy, conversations about extended producer responsibility and sustainability happening at very high levels. So as those conversations are happening, it's crucial that community level stakeholders like canners and street vendors are included in those conversations to ensure that the policies that end up being created based on those conversations recognize the complete spectrum from canners to producers of all who participate in those systems. So here you can see our calls to action. Uh, urge you to contact Senator Kaminsky's office and uh, demand inclusion. Um, Antonio Reynoso, our council member here in East Williamsburg, uh, has been an ally of ours for a long time and has been stymied by red tape at City Hall, trying to access city funding to continue our work. So call him and let him know that now is the time to fight for this. Now is the time to put political will behind informal workers so we can achieve the New York City, the America, I mean, the world society that we know is possible and a sustainable future for everyone. Thank you. I'll pass it back to Janet. Thank you all for your time and for being here. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you to all of our fantastic speakers. Um, as you can see from, from Ryan and Mohammed's presentations on what needs to be done now, these barriers to supporting street vendor and canners livelihoods are long standing. So the deposit hasn't been changed in 30 years. The cap on permits hasn't been lifted in over 30 years. It's past time um, and the actions that can be taken to provide immediate support are so clear. Um, so I really appreciate the way that you laid out that agenda and I encourage everyone to please take these actions in solidarity with Sure We Can and Street Vendor Project to get this change through. It is past time. Um, so thanks everyone. We are at time, but we wanna take some questions. So for those that can stay for you know, five to, to 10 more minutes, um, we'll open up the Q&A. What we would ask you to do is just to put your question in the chat in whatever language you, you, you choose, um, whether on Facebook or on Zoom, and I will read the questions aloud, and I invite any of our speakers to, um, to take these questions. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, it looks like our first question is, um, where does Mohammed Saad work? Uh, what did he sell? Uh, Jenna, we just answered that question in the chat. So I think- You answered that in the chat, okay. Yeah, maybe take um, a- Okay, so the next road. question would be, um, where does the mayor stand on intro um, 1116 and will he sign the bill? Mohammed, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, like two days ago, he was asked a, like a straightforward question about the bill and where he stands. And he said that he supports the final version that's in the council right now. And he will sign the bill when it comes up to when it passes the city council. So that is like as recent as two days ago. Fantastic. Thanks, Mohammed. Um, okay, another question. Mohammed said he can't access his cart. Are most garages open or are many vendors frozen out of their carts? Um, well, uh, I can just respond to that quickly, like generally about uh, most food vendors. Like now the garages are open and some vendors, most vendors are now back to work. But for most of them who cannot work, they cannot work because there is no customer. So even uh, there is no customers anyway in the street. So a lot of people who even try to go out and try to restart their business, there is not much for traffic for them to, to survive. And like, they just cannot really sustain the business. Sorry, I think I was on mute. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. So another question from Jane. Um, did the two sector groups, street vendors and canners, get an opportunity to meet in person over the course of the research? And if so, have possibilities for future solidarity and mutual support opened up? So either Street Vendor Project or Sure We Can, feel free to take that one. 
I can take a crack uh, at it and then like Ryan can add sure. Yes, we have met several times during the study, like reviewing uh, the findings and seeing like how common our struggle are and how we are all dealing with pretty much the same issues. Of course, in different scales and different systems, but pretty much the same. And there are tons of opportunities for us to work together as informal workers, as people who operate mostly under the shade that the government have been neglecting. So one of the things that we have been uh, working on, and I think that sure we can, uh, will definitely benefit from and their members is the campaign to fund the excluded workers. Again, it's not only street vendors, it's not only uh, some workers who are excluded, that's very, very broad spectrum across the board. So we are sure that uh, community members and sure we can will benefit from this campaign. I want to add to that WeGo has been super helpful in connecting New York City researchers with researchers from across Latin America and, and North America, and then also around the world. So we are having conversations and Zoom meetings with, uh, with the other researchers and other sectors across the world. So we're really excited about the, uh, you know, this global solidarity approach to tackling some of these core issues that are not unique to any one city, but rather these are, these are shared concerns. Absolutely, thank you, Chris. Yeah, solidarity building was, was a main objective of the study and um, it's been fantastic to, to collaborate with these two groups in, in New York. Um, just a couple more questions. So this one is for Street Vendor Project from Sam Block. A majority of the city council has supported intro 1116 for some time. Why is it coming up for a vote only now? Good question. Did the bill change since your march and rally in November? Yeah, why now exactly? That's a good question for every single council member because we have been pushing for this bill to pass for at least six years. We launched the campaign back in 2014 and we made it very clear to all the council members that this is a must to pass bill immediately. It is not a thing that should take the council seven years. So that's one. Two, yes, the bill has changed, not dramatically. There is not huge changes to it, but it changed in the terms of the number of permits would be 4,000 new permits over 10 years the type of permit which will be the supervisory license that will end the underground market the underground market will end literally in 11 years from now by 2032 there will be no underground market for these permits and that will save tens of thousands of dollars for street vendors uh, so there is not a lot of big changes but now everyone is on board with the final language and everyone believe that this is the right balance for this legislation. Okay, it looks like there's a question here on EPR. Um, this would be for sure we can. So there's been a lot of talk of changing the EPR um, system in New York and uh, is that proving helpful to canners? As of now, um... We, again, we struggle with the inclusion gap. Uh, the EPR that's been pro proposed so, so far, far, though, it makes some really, really meaningful systemic changes, changes emphasizes, emphasizes producer responsibility, producer responsibility organizations, organizations that are headed and organized, and organized by, the by themselves, people like Coca-Cola, PepsiCo. So though we think it's great that these producers are moving in a direction of taking greater responsibility for what they create, what we haven't seen so far is uh, inclusion of informal workers, community level workers uh, in both roles of agency in terms of devising these policies, but also uh, logistical and instrumental roles in executing them and carrying them out. So we'd like to see both a deeper dialogue between uh, waste pickers, canners, informal workers and uh, producers in creating these policies and uh, governmental entities but also uh, in the policies themselves, provisions to ensure that the people who are currently on the ground in New York City doing the CPR work, doing the reclamation, um, collecting the bottles and thereby holding the producers accountable will continue to be included and supported by the concrete policies that are created. Thanks so much, Ryan, breaking that down for us. 
So we're going to have to close, unfortunately. Um, I know my colleagues have been trying to answer some of the questions in the chat, um, but you can always find Sure We Can and Street Vendor Project on Facebook, social media. Um, feel free to follow them, reach out. The fact sheets um, from Sure We Can and Street Vendor Project are live. They're published on the WeGo website. Really encourage everyone to go check those out, read about these experiences and impacts in detail. Um, and also please take these actions that, um, that Ryan and Mohammed have highlighted today to show your support for these essential but excluded workers. Um, so just a huge thank you to everyone, to all of the fantastic speakers, to our wonderful partners, Sure We Can and Street Vendor Project. Um, and I, I think we'll close with that unless any of my, my colleagues or speakers have anything else to add. Um, and the links to the resources are in the chat. I just saw Kendra put them in there. So please go check them out. Anything to add? If not, um, thanks so much. And um, please, please do follow us and keep up with, with this evolving story um, and show your support. So thanks everyone. Have a great day. Take Thank care. You all.